NBA players who went to jail. Starting with the number one draft pick who defied everyone's expectations. I'm talking about Greg Oden. Greg Oden is a name most basketball fans will be familiar with, but realize they haven't thought about for years. That's because after an incredibly promising start in the late 2000s, Oden basically fell off the map. Oden was born in Buffalo, New York, but when Greg was nine, his family relocated to a city in Indiana called Terre Haute. Greg was one of those kids who looked like a future NBA player basically from day one. He stood head and shoulders above his classmates and had noticeably more basketball skill than anybody in his entire middle school league. After dominating the court nonstop at Sarah Scott Middle School, the Odin family decided it might be worth it to relocate again, this time in support of furthering Greg's basketball career. The family moved to Indianapolis the home of the Pacers. Greg spent his teenage years watching Reggie Miller and the Pacers compete every year for a title, repeatedly getting close but never getting there. He also spent his teenage years obliterating every high school basketball team in the region. Greg was the undisputed leader and star player for Lawrence North High School. Eric Montross is another NBA player to have attended the same high school and so was Mike Conley Jr. who finally made his first All-Star game in 2021. Conley Jr. and Odin were actually teammates, but it was Odin who attracted the most scouting attention by far. Leading the team to three consecutive state championships, Odin graduated in 2006 with the reputation as the best high school player in the country. Both he and Conley Jr. decided to attend Ohio State University together. However, this was when injuries first began to plague Odin's career. He had suffered a wrist injury late in his senior year of high school, and before taking the floor at Ohio State, he had to undergo surgery. This led to a somewhat anticlimactic start to Odin's college career, but even sitting on the bench, Ohio State was still ranked as the number one team in the NCAA that year. Odin finally played for the first time in December of 2006. His impact was instantly felt across the country. Odin was seven feet tall, unstoppable on offense, and a consistently great defender, rebounder, and passer as well. There really wasn't a major weak spot to his game aside from him getting in foul trouble fairly often. Steve Kerr described Odin as being a once in a decade player. As a freshman, Odin was named to the AP All-American team. He was one of the first freshmen to receive the honor in college basketball history, but amazingly, another freshman also received the honor that same year along with Odin. Apparently, it was some kid named Kevin Durant. It's pretty hard to imagine how Greg Odin could have been more hyped going into the NBA. He was a done deal for the 2007 NBA Draft. Portland had the first pick that year. Crazy enough, Durant was picked second. That's because Greg Oden got to go ahead of him. And at the time, nobody batted an eye. Had the Seattle Supersonics been given the first pick instead, they would have probably made the same decision. And KD and Damian Lillard might have ended up teammates. As you can see, it was no small impact that Greg Oden had on the NBA at least in the beginning. Calling him the next LeBron wasn't even really that controversial back then. But once Greg Oden's NBA career began, things began to shift dramatically. In September of 2007, just months before the start of the season, Oden suffered a microfracture in his right knee. This caused him to miss his entire rookie season. The following year, Oden made his NBA debut against the defending Western Conference champions, the LA Lakers. Odin played for 13 minutes without scoring before he injured his foot. Odin again had to sit out the beginning of the season, but he recovered more quickly from this injury than the last. Returning in November of 2008, Odin finally started to look like the player everyone expected, putting up numbers similar to his freshman year at Ohio State. But then, somehow, Odin managed to fracture his knee again by running into Corey Maggette during a game against the Warriors. Once again, Odin missed an entire NBA season. Then, after undergoing another surgery on his knee, Odin was forced to miss the next season too. And then, after all that, it turned out that Odin needed yet another surgery. His knees were basically betraying him. He essentially didn't play in the NBA at all until 2012, half a decade after he was drafted. In 2012, rather than give Odin the chance to finally play, the Trailblazers waived him unwilling to risk any more losses due to his perpetual injuries. This must have been devastating for the number one draft pick. Odin declared he would spend the 2012-2013 season recovering and training. At first, his hard work appeared to pay off. 
Odin landed a one-year deal with the Miami Heat for the 2013-2014 season. Let's not overlook what that means. Odin, the guy who got drafted before Kevin Durant, was now teammates with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. The Miami Heat were defending back-to-back -back titles that year, and they made it all the way to the NBA Finals. Even though Odin was highly overshadowed by his Hall of Fame teammates, it looked like he might be on the verge of a championship ring. But the San Antonio Spurs spoiled all that. It's easy to wonder if Odin's career would have taken a different turn if the Heat won their third straight title. When teams win, they usually want to keep things how they are, but when they lose, especially in disappointing fashion, they tend to want to shake things up. That's exactly what happened. LeBron went back to Cleveland, and Greg Odin was not offered a new contract. Odin was still highly motivated, and as a free agent, he spent the rest of the year training as hard as he ever had. There were rumors of multiple workouts with NBA teams, and some speculation about when and where Odin would make a comeback. But sadly, it never materialized. Odin ended up playing a year overseas in the Chinese Basketball Association, and that's pretty much the last time anyone has ever heard from him. Greg Odin's basketball story is tragic enough on its own. What makes the story truly awful is that Odin also wound up in jail as his professional career was spiraling down the drain. In August of 2014, after losing the NBA Finals and losing his spot on the Heat, Odin sank into a dark place. Given how his NBA career had turned out, it's totally understandable. But eventually, Odin did something that was neither understandable or sane. He and his girlfriend were staying at his mother's house in Lawrence, Indiana. Greg had developed a pretty serious drinking problem and it was starting to dangerously affect his behavior. During an argument with his girlfriend, Odin, who, keep in mind, is 7 feet tall and almost 300 pounds, punched her right in the face. In fact, according to later reports, he punched her three times and fractured her nose. Odin was immediately charged with battery and arrested. But of course, even though we spent more time off the court than on it during his NBA career, Odin could easily afford to post bail, which was set at just $10,000. Odin wore an ankle bracelet for a year. In 2015, he pled guilty in court. Normally, battery which results in serious bodily injury is a charge that carries between 1 and 6 years in prison. But as we will see over and over again with these cases, the law applies differently to rich NBA players. In the end, Greg Odin didn't even have to go behind bars. He had to pay a fine, the sum of which was not made public, and he was placed on probation with mandatory counseling. Odin has since gotten sober and landed a job on the Ohio State coaching staff. He's also gotten married and had a child with another woman named Sabrina Williams, who must be completely out of her mind. Matt Barnes Matt Barnes is definitely less of an asshole than Greg Odin, and he's much less of a failure too. Unlike Odin, Barnes actually managed to win an NBA championship. He also sustained a fairly long NBA career during which he actually played most of the time. But Barnes has also had a pretty shocking run-in with the law that landed him in jail. No one was hurt during the events that transpired, but Barnes did do something pretty insane and super illegal. But we'll get to that in a second. Barnes is from a very different background than Greg Oden. While Oden grew up in Indiana, Barnes was born in the heart of California, near Silicon Valley. He attended Del Campo High School in a town called Fair Oaks, and like most future NBA players, he was the team's star player. Amazingly, Barnes also played on the football team, but it was basketball where Barnes truly shined. He is by far the greatest Fair Oaks Cougar ever, and was absolutely showered with awards and accolades. Barnes earned a scholarship to play at UCLA, where he continued to excel and played for four years. In 2002, Barnes was selected with the 46th pick in the NBA draft. He was selected by the Memphis Grizzlies, but they instantly traded him to the Cavaliers. The Cavaliers put Barnes on their D-League team. It wasn't until 2004 that Barnes was able to resign with an NBA team, and as luck would have it, it was one of his hometown teams growing up, the Sacramento Kings. Barnes would also later sign with another of his hometown teams, the Golden State Warriors. It was there that Barnes finally won his first and only NBA title in 2017. Barnes ended his career that same year. It seemed to most like a triumphant and happy ending, but they were forgetting a huge wrinkle that came right in the middle of his career. In 2012, Barnes was playing for a brief period with the Los Angeles Lakers. One evening, he was pulled over by an LAPD officer. The reason for being pulled over was supposedly a traffic warrant. Whatever the reason, 
Barnes was extremely unhappy to have been pulled over. The officer reportedly tried to explain to Barnes that he was driving on a suspended license and that he was going to be fined $26,000. Barnes was thrilled at the news. So thrilled, in fact, that he decided he'd like to increase the fine by nearly double on the spot. Barnes started verbally harassing the officer. He described how much he enjoyed sleeping with the officer's wife, how much she complained about the officer's poor performance in bed, and how disagreeable Barnes found the officer's very existence to be. Most importantly, Barnes made a verbal threat against the officer. This granted Barnes an express ticket straight into the slammer. For insults and threats alone, Barnes had to post a $51,000 bail, more than five times what Greg Oden paid for literally breaking a woman's nose. But as it turns out, Barnes had done some of that too. A few years earlier, he had been arrested for hitting his fiance, a woman named Gloria Govan. In fact, this incident was what produced the traffic warrant. Barnes had conveniently forgotten to appear in court to face his battery charges. It's amazing how little of an impact this all had on Barnes' career. Like Odin, he ended up only spending mere hours behind bars. Most people don't even remember this today, but it could be easily argued that maybe we should. Meta Sandiford Artest While the debate about who the greatest basketball player is will rage on and on for decades to come, there's no need to debate about the craziest basketball player ever. Meta Sandiford Artest, previously known as Meta World Peace, previously previously known as Ron Artest, is the winner by many, many miles. He warns you of it, even with just his multiple names and their confusing history. Artest was a troublemaker throughout his NBA career, earning more suspensions than any other player, including the longest single suspension of all time. He's also one of only a few players to ever face criminal charges for his behavior on the court, or more accurately, in the stands. Artest has also visited the Slammer for domestic violence and for the cruel and unusual crime of starving his dog. While it wasn't something he went to jail for, Artest also went on Jimmy Kimmel in his underwear in pursuit of unknown goals. Artest was required to start taking medication by the Indiana Pacers, but this project was a failure. Artest found that he preferred flushing the pills down the toilet instead of swallowing them. Artest has been an advocate for mental health issues and animal abuse, two things which I suppose he is technically an expert in. Artest has beaten women, beaten fans, abused animals, changed his name to a meaningless string of words twice, and gone on a live talk show with his pants off. If that isn't the resume of a dangerously unstable dude, I have no idea what is. But astonishingly, even with such an extreme case, the law still granted special treatment to this famous NBA star. After his domestic violence arrest, ESPN reported that he could face up to four years in prison. Artest was only sentenced to 20 days, and he only spent 10 days behind bars. Artest was allowed to continue playing in the NBA shortly after his release. He has since retired, gotten married, and had several children. Hopefully, he doesn't have a dog.